Welcome back my friends to yet another video on the Hardcore Progression series, this time episode 81, and this is going to be a very monumental episode in the sense that we will finally be taking the plunge and attempting one of the game's hardest challenges, the Inferno. It is finally time, after years of using the Fire Cape, we are going to try to attempt to acquire the upgraded best in slot melee cape, and I'm planning on documenting the entire experience. So fair warning, this will include pretty much all of the death clips. I think that doing it this way will really help other people who are also striving to complete this goal. So going to try to document pretty much the entire experience or as much as I can to really give you the full picture. Um, last episode we really built up to it well by getting some last second upgrades. We got the DHCB and the Ancestral Legs, so I think I'm as ready as I ever will be. Getting the ACB would be a slight upgrade, but I think that I am capable of completing this challenge with the gear that I have at hand. So with that being said, let us step inside the Inferno and see how long this cape takes to get. I'm predicting it will take at least a few weeks. This is going to be a very difficult challenge to complete. After sacrificing this fire cape in my inventory right here, it will become official. We will gain eligibility to enter the Inferno. It is now done. We are now able to access the Inferno. It is officially time to start the most difficult and challenging grind on this account's progression. At this point, I don't think I have any real plans of recording the initial stages of this grind. I think I'm just going to take my time and uh, try to learn some of the basic mechanics like how to flick blobs and marking tiles for various safe spots and things like that. But after we get all that kind of boring stuff out of the way, I will resume recording and hopefully we can get to some of the later stages of this challenge. Here it is my friends, the start of the long grind ahead. I think this is the gear sup we are going to use to start off. Uh, I might adjust it accordingly later, but for now this is what I have assembled. Let's see how things go. We have gotten to the mages. How exciting is this? It, it honestly is just really rough getting past some of these initial waves. You, you can't underestimate some of the waves in the 20s. They can kind of get you. The third attempt has been completed. Unfortunately, we were one tick too early on a mage flick and we got one shot for a 57, but we got to wave 53 on the third attempt, which is way better than I thought. That has exceeded my expectations by a landslide. Pretty good. Wave 53. We will go attempt some more tomorrow. So one thing I haven't tried at the Inferno yet is to bring a Falador shield to recharge my prayer, because uh, it turns out the Fally Shield 4 can do that twice per day, and it also turns out that unbeknownst to me, I have been literally one step away from completing this darn diary for like ages now, and I just forgot about it. So yeah, kind of should have done this a long time ago, so whoops, but we got it done, all I had to do was kill a bunch of black knights, then buy this white two-handed sword, and that's all it took. We now have access to the Fally Shield 4, and we can test it out in the Inferno and see if it makes a difference. I mean, you never know, it could be the difference between running out of prayer and making it to Zuck. So, gonna try this out and see if it's worth hanging on to. Also, I guess I'll use this lamp on, like, prayer or something. Prayer's pretty difficult to train, so I think that's a pretty good skill to put that on. It is now day four of the Inferno practice, and man do I have an experience to share. So basically for the first week my goal was to get to Chad, and then I was thinking that I would inevitably die on triples on my first try, but surprisingly enough, miraculously, we made it all the way to Zuck on the fourth day, and I think I can largely attribute the success to luck. I got pretty lucky with the spawns, and I was able to tank things pretty well, so it was kind of a fluke, but regardless, we did it. We got some experience on the final wave, which was really, really good. Um, when I got to single jad, uh, went okay. I did tank a hit because I wasn't expecting five healers. I thought that all Inferno jads just had three, so I tagged the first three, got back on jad. A few seconds later, I noticed there were two more, and I got distracted by those, and I tanked a hit, so... Uh, whoops, I got pretty lucky there to not get killed, so it um, was nice that the RNG allowed me to survive that. Uh, moving on to triples though, I didn't think there was a chance in hell I'd get past them, and uh, miraculously somehow I did. I got past the first one pretty well. Uh, the second one, I tanked another hit. I think I just got nervous, so yeah, I guess that happens. Live and you learn. Uh, third one was pretty good. Didn't have the greatest blood barrage management. I was so nervous to the point where I just, I don't know, I didn't have the greatest composure, so I had to use some bruise instead, so not too great, but at least we got past them. I guess that's all that matters. And then during the Zuck fight itself, I was vastly underprepared. 
I wasn't really expecting to get past triples on the first try, so that was both surprising and problematic at the same time, because I had not done any of my homework in regards to the final Zuck fight. I was expecting that I would inevitably die on triples, and at that point, that would signify the point where I finally try to do the homework to figure out how to do the final fight. Uh, but seeing as I didn't really do any preparation, I didn't know exactly what I was doing for the fight, I didn't know how to manage the sets or anything. Um, I did do a couple of things right, I walked with the shield pretty well, only tanked one Zuck hit, and that was due to forgetting to put my crossbow on long range, which is, I guess, kind of understandable. I can remember to fix that next time. Um, also did pretty well with the sets. I was pretty lucky in the sense that I tanked a lot of hits. Uh, the rangers were pretty humble, but the blowpipe running next to the shield was pretty spot on, uh, so no problems there. And then when I got to the Jad, I didn't have any supplies, and I tried flicking the prayers, and I was doing okay, but then once the healer spawned, I ran out of time and another set spawned in and killed me, so uh, yeah, uh, we made it further than I thought that I would, so a lot of good experience, I took a lot of good things away from this fight, learned a lot as well, and I am looking forward to getting back to this point for round two. So apparently it turned out that I had just enough Dagonoff bones to get another prey level, so there it is, 88 prayer. Well this Inferno grind has sure been tough, but one advantage to it is that I've gained a fair bit of smithing XP because of it, due to having to restock on rune darts and that kind of thing, having to go to Fossil Island and World Hop for the rune ore spawns. And uh, yeah, as a result, there's another smithing level, this time 96, getting pretty close to 99. Alright, time for another Inferno update, this time Inferno update number two. We have made it back to Zuck for the second time, and uh, on this attempt we had some pretty interesting things transpire. Uh, to start off, we lost our North Pillar at, I think, wave 59, and so we had to deal with the remaining hard waves, all the wave 60s, using the South Pillar. So that was some pretty interesting exposure, some good practice there having to work with that pillar instead of the north one. Uh, then after that we made it to Jad, which went by pretty easily, no issues there. Uh, then the triples did give me some trouble. I think the reason my first experience at triple Jads went so well is that it was just low pressure. I was expecting that I wasn't going to make it past them, and I just wasn't as nervous because I didn't think I had anything to lose. So I think that was kind of the main factor that made me succeed so well on the first attempt, because this attempt was definitely undeserved. I tanked three Jad hits, one of them being a 4, so I got super lucky. At one point I got knocked down to 8 HP and I recovered by healing up on the healers and then running through the first Jad. So a uh, decent recovery, I'm pretty happy about that at least. But yeah, next time I need to uh, try to tighten things up on the triple Jads because I keep using supplies here. And ideally you don't want to use any brews on these, so still need a lot of practice on triples. But we did make it through, undeserved, but we did make it through. Now as for the Zuck fight, there were a few things that I did right that I was pretty happy about. Uh, for the most part, I did a good job remembering to switch to long range on my crossbow to avoid getting dragged in on the corners. I also did pretty well when it came to taking down the rangers during the sets. The blowpipe running was decent, um, but there were a lot more mistakes that I made, far more than the first attempt. I tanked a whopping four Zuck hits and miraculously survived every single one of them, so I had some insane tank RNG. I think Jagex was just smiling down upon me on this attempt. And it was really nice to have survived those hits because it allowed me to last a bit longer and get more experience, so very thankful for that. Um, the way I got hit um, was basically that two occasions I was one tick behind the shield, and so that's a pretty easy fix, not too worried about that, I can avoid that next time. Uh, another tank was when I misclicked my crossbow when trying to hit the mage on the left side. Um, you can't reach the mage with your blowpipe, so I tried to switch to the crossbow and just misclicked, so pretty easy fix, at least I know exactly what I did wrong for next time. And then the final hit that I tanked was not only the luckiest one, but it's also the most brain dead out of the mistakes that I made. I think I just got distracted when the Jad spawned in and I clicked way prematurely. I clicked like a full three seconds too early, and I tanked a zero. So that happened, I've never seen that before, I didn't even know you could tank a zero. I think Zuck literally splashed on me, so that was some RNG unlike any that I've ever seen. Um, but then, uh, yeah, the final mistake that we made was probably the worst one. We forgot to enchant our ruby bolts. You heard that right. I actually went in and fought Zuck with unenchanted bolts. I hate to admit that, it's, it's rather embarrassing, but yeah, that happened. Uh, I had some ruby bolts in my bank, and I just did not check to see if they were enchanted. I didn't even know I had them until recently, right before I started the Inferno attempts. I thought that I only had about a couple hundred 
dragon diamond bolts. And then basically at the last second, I found out that I had a secret stash of a couple hundred dragon ruby bolts that I apparently made a few months back. And I remember being kind of excited to find them because I didn't know that I had them. And in my haste, I chucked them into the bolt pouch and I did not confirm if they were enchanted or not. I kind of just assumed that they were and yeah. A bit of a mistake there, but at least they're enchanted for next time. An embarrassing mistake, but at least it won't happen again. So yeah, looking forward to getting back to Zuck for the third time. I'm feeling pretty confident. I think I can get a bit further. I think on the next attempt, I'm feeling pretty good about getting to healers. So let's try to get back into the Inferno and see if we can get back to Zuck. Time for Inferno update number three, and I am pleased to say that we made it back to Zuck just two attempts later. So two Zuck attempts within three runs total. So really happy about that. We got back to Zuck and this time we actually had an incredibly clean triples. No hits tanked whatsoever. Just really clean overall. Didn't really get my HP below like 70. I think the healers knocked me the lowest and that wasn't really all that bad. Uh, so yeah, very clean there. And then as for Zuck, we did pretty well. We had enchanted bolts this time. We got a couple of nice procs and the first two sets were completely fine. Took a little damage from the ranger on the second set, but it was totally okay. We just brewed up. And then once we got to Jad, unfortunately, we fell in a similar fashion to the first two attempts. All three of my Zuck attempts have resulted in me dying as soon as the healers spawn on Jad. So I need to clean up that a bit and uh, actually manage to get past Jad so I can get some exposure on the actual Zuck healers. Uh, this time I ran in front of the shield too prematurely. I got a little stressed out by the lack of DPS on Jad, and I stopped paying enough attention to Zuck. So, lesson learned, next time we'll try not to make the same mistake. Oop, well, there's a uh, 90 mining. Uh, did not mean to cancel out the message, but accidentally uh, clicked on a new vein. I thought I was gonna get the level when I deposited the uh, pay dirt, but uh, yeah, there it is, 90 mining, as a result of trying to hunt down some more runite to make more darts, because, yeah, the Inferno is just eating up all of my supplies. I'm constantly having to go here and uh, collect more rune and stuff like that. But yeah, that's 90 mining, so that's kind of cool. That is the second to last skill to 90. The only one that remains is rune crafting. Rune crafting seems to be lagging behind quite a bit, so uh, a little bit of catching up to do there. So last night, I decided to do my first ever Inferno attempt using dragon darts, and for the most part, they worked pretty well. I had a pretty clean run that got all the way to wave 59, but then unfortunately, the internet cut out again, so that kind of ended the run prematurely, but was looking promising until the internet decided to stop. Uh, so gonna try to do some more runs with Dragon Darts, and one way to get some more is by opening my nearly 70 Dragon Implings that I've had in my bank for a long time now, since the Ranger Boot grind. So at long last, let's go ahead and crack some of these suckers open and see if we can get lucky and maybe get a good ratio of dragon dart tips you can get like 100 to 300 per impling so i'm going to be kind of annoyed if i get like 102 or something so hopefully that doesn't happen can we get any early yes we got 255 that's a nice quantity as well no way dude i just got back to back to back okay this is going a lot better than i anticipated hopefully we don't go on like a dry streak or anything that's crazy we just got back to back to back oh yeah and you also get dragon arrows and dragon bones, like these things are pretty sweet. I'm gonna be sad when I'm finally done opening them. Oh look, an elite clue, that's kinda cool. I think that I could turn this in for a master clue, so I guess I'll go do that real fast. Oh, I didn't know you could straight up get dragon darts. That's kinda cool. You don't get as many, so it's better to get the dart tips, but yeah, I had no idea you could just get like pre-made dragon darts. Oh, that was a nice quantity right there. Wait, what kind of seeds are these? Oh my gosh, six snapdragon seeds? I'm getting stuff that I didn't know existed. That's like really, really good. And that's the final impling opened. Honestly felt like a little kid on Christmas just opening up all their presents. That was so freaking surreal. Just opening all those dragon implings at the same time. I'm kind of glad that I saved them up. That was a lot of fun. And we actually got a fleshing level after all that. That's kind of cool. 97 this time, thanks to the dragon arrows and dragon darts had just enough dragon dart tips to squeeze out this level. So after all that, we now have just over 3,000 dragon darts to our name, and as a way to conserve them, I might consider bringing a dart switch into my next few attempts and use like rune for the first 49 waves, and then once I get to 50 and beyond, I might swap them out for dragon darts. It is now time for Inferno update number four. Uh, we once again made it back to Zuck with really nice supplies, almost as good as the last attempt at Zuck, 
except for minus maybe about one restore. Um, although, don't be fooled, we do have a couple of procs on the Fally Shield, so I have a little bit more prayer than what it looks like in the uh, video clip. Uh, so I used the shield uh, pretty early on in the Zuck fight. Uh, but anyway, um, it was a pretty good attempt. We did have some very good RNG when it comes to tanking hits. I took two more Zuck fireballs, unfortunately. One of them was just a pretty understandable misclick where I thought I clicked on the edge, but I clicked one tile towards the middle too much. Uh, I basically clicked what I thought was the corner, then I looked back on Chad, and then when I looked back on my character, I realized, and it was too late. And we only tanked a nine. I don't know how I keep getting away with this, but we have tanked a remarkable amount of Zuck hits. Uh, I'm not going to complain, though. Uh, then later on, we tanked another one just by simply running in front of the shield too early. I need to break that habit. I'm really bad at that. Moving on, though, we also tanked a couple of Jad hits, so a couple mistakes there. I was just one tick late both times, so pretty close to getting the prayer right, but I was just too slow, so need to work on that. And then um, probably the biggest blunder that we had was not using the stamina potion and then somehow miraculously not getting punished for it. I don't know how this Zuck Fireball didn't hit me right here, but it just didn't. Apparently the game thought I was behind the shield. Clearly I am not, but once again, I'm not going to complain. I just need to get better at drinking the stamina. I was focusing on the healers. Understandably, it was the first time getting to healers, so my brain was spazzing out, and yeah, I, I forgot the stamina. And I almost ran out of prayer too, so that was a bit sketchy. But we did get past the healers, so that was cool. Aside from that one mishap, the healers went perfect. Really no complaints at all. I was really happy with how that worked out. Uh, and then towards the end, the reason why we didn't get the cape is that our shield broke. So yeah, um, didn't have the best luck when it comes to the shield tanking hits. Chad hit over 100, a mage hit like a 70. And on three out of four of the sets that I had to deal with, it spawned where I was next to the ranger. And I think ideally you want to be next to the mage because he's the biggest threat. You want to tag him first, but I couldn't reach the mage on three out of four of the sets, unfortunately. So the shield took a bunch of damage from the mages. And uh, on this hit right here on the fourth set, the ranger, the ranger, man, if he had hit anything less than a 16 right here, I might have my cape right now. But yep, he uh, hit the 16 and the shield fell. And that was the end of the attempt. Very encouraging though, very solid attempt, and I'm looking forward to getting back for another crack at the Mighty Zuck. Attempt number five, maybe that will be it. Oh no! Well, that was a bad misclick. Well, I'm dead. So the extra unfortunate thing about this clip is that after analyzing it further, I was only within melee range for one game tick, but the timing worked out perfect, so as soon as I stepped in, for just a split second, Jad uh, bopped me for an 81, so yeah, sometimes that's how the Inferno goes, you just get unlucky sometimes. So not too long after that first death to the Triple Jads, we made it back thankfully, and uh, this time we got a redemption against Triples, we made it through very cleanly, no issues whatsoever, and then we made it on to our fifth Zuck attempt. Now, for this attempt, it was a pretty good effort overall. I did not tank a single Zuck hit, which I am really thrilled about. I think that's the first time I've accomplished that, so very happy about the progress there. Now, when I got to the sets, I got punished pretty hard. I got pummeled really hard by the Rangers, which is something I have not had happen to me yet. I think I've had overall very good luck tanking them, but this time that was not the case, so I had to use a couple of brews just to get past the first two sets. Uh, we did have a lot of supplies remaining though, so when I got to Jad, I was feeling pretty confident, things were going really well, but as soon as the healers spawned, I let myself get distracted, I missed a flick, and that's all it took. I uh, got bopped a 92 this time, so the last two encounters with Jads have been rather punishing. The first time it triples, and then this time on our fifth Zuck attempt. This place has a very low margin for error, so any small mistake can cost you your life. So yeah, unfortunately, that is what happened on this attempt. So after that rather unfortunate 92 damage KO from Jad, I'm happy to say I made it back to Zuck the next day, and it was probably my cleanest attempt so far. The DPS for the first part of the fight was so good that I was confident in not even waiting for a second set, which is the first time I've done that, and that was without a ruby proc as well. I went the entire duration of the fight without getting a single ruby spec. Uh, the DPS was just really good without those. I was getting consistent 2 to 300 XP drops, so skipped the second set, went straight to Jad, which went by pretty well. Uh, the second set eventually spawned like 30 seconds after Jad, took that down, 
then went on to healers, which also went well. I've had good experiences with healers so far. I've gotten to them twice, and so far we're 2-0, oh, gotten past them both times. And the only reason I did not secure the cape this run is that once again, I could not for the life of me keep that shield alive, and it unfortunately fell. So my shield's ultimate demise occurred during the third set. It had about 50% of its health, and I was feeling pretty comfortable. But what happened was during healers, I went to the edge of the arena to dodge one of them, and in doing so, that dragged the mage that was already spawned. And then when the next set spawned, the mages were not precisely stacked. And it turns out when that happens, left clicking does not tag the mage that is not aggroed to you. And I was not aware of that. I thought left clicking would work, because last time I was in a similar situation and left clicking did the job, so I didn't want to fix what isn't broken and I paid the price, so that was a valuable lesson there. You have to barrage the stack to ensure you tag both of them when one of the mages gets dragged. So it's looking like at this point, as long as I can tag those sets even faster than I already am, and if I could throw in a couple of ruby specs in there, that might be the completed recipe that will allow us to finally get this cape. I think we're really close. It could happen in the next few attempts. Come on, just give me the hit. Is that it? It's done. It's done, boys. There's the Inferno Cape. The seventh try at Zuck. We got it. How long until my next set? That must have been really close. At that point, I was just going to ignore the, the fifth set. Whew. Oh man, what a journey that was. Through all the pain, we did it. All the heartbreak, all the sadness, all the suffering. We got the cape. We got the cape! What an indescribable feeling, man. 
It's done! I don't have to do it anymore! Look at that though, completely out of supplies, minus one dose of Ranging Potion and two doses of Restore. That could not have been too much closer. That was very nerve-wracking at the end. But here we go, this is the, uh, the most satisfying item that I will ever deposit into my bank. We will go ahead and retire the Fire Cape slot that has been sitting up here in the top left corner of my bank for a very long time now. Gonna go ahead and release the fire cape and insert the, I almost said max cape, I don't know why, infernal cape, max cape one day, we'll get that soon, maybe. Well, since we no longer really have much of a need for the fire cape, let's go ahead and gamble it, see if we get the pet. I was informed that for the clue step where you need a fire cape, an inferno cape works, so I can just use that, which is pretty cool. So yeah, no need for this. Come on, man, give me the pet, please, just, just give me the pet. Aw, oh, no pet this time. I think at this point I'm gonna take some Gorilla Glue and just glue this thing to my back, and I probably will not be taking this off for at least a few days. So I'd been holding on to a Jad task for more than the entire Inferno grind. So just as a way to celebrate the cape, I finally knocked out this task, and as an added twist, I tried using melee for the first time. The healer didn't even have a chance, bro! Look how far away the healer was. <laughs> what was that? Oh, come on, bro, why you gotta do that? <laughs> Oh man, I can't get over how fast that was. The healers weren't even close to getting to him. All right, let's gamble the cape. Aw, oh, still not lucky with the Jad pet. It has now been a couple of days since achieving the Inferno cape, and at this point I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a breakdown that highlights some of the statistics along the way. So to start, this grind took me about a month to complete, and I averaged about one and a half attempts per day. A lot of days I'd do one or two, some days I'd do none, other days I'd do up to three. So yeah, about one and a half attempts per day over the course of a month. Um, now in terms of supplies used, it was quite punishing. I used probably over 50 mil of supplies, like over 50,000 blood and death runes, 20,000 rune darts, quite a few scales. Uh, so very punishing on the supplies, but well, well worth it in the end. I also accumulated myself over 400,000 tockel because of all the failed attempts, and that's without the completion of the Karemja Elite Diary, which uh, I believe boosts the number of tockel you receive by a certain percentage. So even without the diary, still got quite a few tockel that I can spend on some cool stuff, maybe the obsidian armor set and some runes and things like that. So a lot of time and supplies went into this grind, but at the end of the day, it was 100% worth it. Definitely one of the most noteworthy things I have ever achieved on this game, and I largely owe it to you guys. I really appreciate everyone who tuned into the streams and provided feedback and advice on how to complete certain aspects of the waves. And yeah, it feels really good to get this out of the way, and I cannot wait to utilize it in the next episode. Gonna get reacclimated to some solar raids and things like that, and just kinda have fun with it. So yeah, thank you all as always once again, and I will see you all relatively soon in the next episode. So take care.